I'm assuming it went pretty good on the regular graphing ones because a lot of people were coming up asking me questions on those during the hour. <clears throat> but then some people I don't think had even gotten to this page by the end of the hour and, and that's kind of why the, they were confused about the upload portion. Uh, this was intended for you to graph all of these equations in Desmos. Okay? There wasn't necessarily meant for you to solve anything at all. So we have negative 0.007x squared. Plus 0.84 plus 0.8. Wait, is that right? Oh, thank you. I was going to say, that graph doesn't seem right. There we go. Okay, first thing. Uh, this graph is meant to mimic that bridge. And I know a lot of people didn't really like catch on to that part at first, partially because there was a shocking number of people that forgot to write the minus sign here. And so their graph didn't look anything like what was on the picture, and so they had trouble kind of tying them together. <clears throat> um, by looking at this, I can definitely tell that we're zoomed in way too much. So I'm gonna zoom out, and then I'm gonna see that this should look like the bridge they showed. Now the question it asked was, I believe it was a 24 foot, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so you graph this bridge, and it, it showed the x and y axis here to try to make you tie them together, but it, it, it's kind of difficult to see. But it says, can a 24 foot tall, I'm reading that totally bad, let's pretend I read that correct. Can a sailboat that is 24 feet tall pass under the bridge? Justify your answer. Well. Looking at this, there's only one thing I actually need to know, and that's how tall the bridge is. So if I click on the picture, it tells, I see 6026. And so I saw a lot of people writing down 6026 as their answer. Because I, I think they kind of understood that that was the type of answer they needed for this problem, but they really didn't get how they went together. Say it again. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's really all you need. So the 60 that's here represents it's 60 feet from the beginning of the bridge. The 26 represents that the bridge is 26 feet tall. And if you have a 24 foot boat trying to go underneath it, that'll be fine because there's two feet spare between the bridge and the, and the boat. So all you were really trying to do was check <clears throat> if that was taller than 24. And then a lot of these other questions on that page were similar to that. So if I go back to, oh, that's not it. Two was the only one that was actually different. Question two was a roller coaster, I'll come back to that. Um, this one was shooting an arrow, kind of questioning why they're shooting the arrow almost straight up into the air. Uh, but this one was about shooting an arrow. And it wants to know if you shooting that arrow would make it over a 68-foot tree. So this one's similar, but backwards. You're, you're kind of trying to check if your arrow equation is going to go higher than 68. And if I remember correctly, when you graphed it, the highest spot was like 66. And so what you would just basically say, no, the arrow's not going to make it over a 68-foot tree. And then this last one, I think, was something about flooding. Uh, the height and feet of the curved arch support for a bridge over a creek can be modeled by that. Uh, is, if there's a flood that raises the level of the creek 5.5 feet, will the top of the arch support be above the water? And this one, um, I want to say the bridge was seven feet high in the middle. I can't remember. I, did, I, I know I did all these yesterday. People came up. Was I wrong? Eight? Okay, sure. So the bridge was eight feet above the water. So if the water rises 5.5 feet, the top of the bridge will be fine. Um, I mean, we're not actually gonna talk about if the bridge floods or not, because that's 
kind of different. So this one you just would say yes, it's okay because it's below the bridge. So number two was slightly different only because you weren't checking to see if something would fit over or under it or something. This one just says a portion of the coaster follows that equation and it wants to know the highest spot on your little section. And so when you graphed it, I think the center was at 7, 3. So that's basically just saying that the highest spot on your track is 3 feet. So that's kind of how this page was supposed to go. A lot of it was just putting the graph in the calculator and trying to find answers from what's there. And that's pretty much exactly what we're doing today, which you're going to find is pretty easy after doing yesterday's. So I had you guys focus on the graph part yesterday. Um, the actual homework was intended for you not to look at the graph. The homework was intended for you to just find answers from the equation only. And we'll, we'll do that, but I didn't want to do it right away. So if you get to this next page, <clears throat> it says uh, solve quadratic equations by graphing. Now, it doesn't make it super clear here. What we're trying to solve is if you have this equation that's written on the left and it's equal to zero and you're trying to find answers for x. That's what we're actually trying to solve. One way you can solve it is by graphing this equation, which is what's written over here, and then finding the x-intercepts. So remember how I kept constantly writing next to x-intercepts? They were called roots or solutions, I think that was the other word. Solutions means it's the answers. So we're essentially only going to look where it crosses the x-axis, and that's the answers we're going to be looking for. So let's, let's put this one in first, x squared plus 7x plus 6. Okay, so I've got this. I'm, oh, that's right, I'm way zoomed out. So I get this once I plug it in. Um, for me to find out the answers from this, I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to see that it crosses at negative 1 and negative 6. So in my notes, I'm really, today I'm really only focused on where it crosses. So negative, okay, now I gotta try to read this. Negative one, negative six, one, two. I think that's negative six. I'm not actually worried about the vertex at all today. <clears throat> Sometimes the vertex absolutely has a purpose and it just kinda depends on what you're looking for. Today we only care about where it crosses. So I'm just going to kind of make my drawing just from these two points. Okay, so it says graph the equation. Yep, we got that done. Where does the equation cross the x-axis? Yeah, go for it. We're getting there, but yes, that's a good question. Correct. That, we, that it definitely is going to be possible. <clears throat> what is significant about crossing the x-axis? These are the solutions. Now, the, the last part right here is exactly what you're asking, pretty much. Can a parabola have zero roots, one root, three roots? So we've already found out it can have two roots. Two roots are solutions. Can it have zero roots? Yes. You had that in your graphs yesterday. If it doesn't cross the x-axis, it won't have any roots or solutions. So if it helps, let's draw a little picture of it. If your parabola looks like that, it's not going to cross. And in that case, you would say that there are no solutions. That was a really bad arrowhead. Let's fix that. 
<clears throat> can a parabola have one root or one solution only? There's actually only one way you can do that, but you, it can. If I have my graph sit right on the axis, then the vertex would be right on there, and that would only be one spot. So I guess, if, if anything, I should answer this above it too, but I've, I'm assuming the picture kind of answers yes. Um, can a parabola cross three times? Is there any way you can picture that in your head that it crosses three times? No. So two is definitely going to be the maximum. And then one, one trick you're going to learn here, probably in Algebra 2 more than anything, the highest power of an equation tells you how many answers there can be. This is a squared. That's going to be the most number of answers you can find. OK, here's what I would like you to do if you can. Graph both of these and find the answers on your own Desmos. Let's see how this goes. And we can get some volunteers who are super excited to volunteer today. One, one. Okay, Mikey, whenever you get to that point, like once you graph number one and figure it out, do you want to come up here and draw it and write the answer? I'm assuming you don't have it on there yet because you're probably just kind of getting to Desmos and stuff. Okay? And I can certainly help you out if you want some help on it. Otherwise, Grayson is a pro too. Uh, one, four. Bella, whenever you get there, the second question. So graph it on Desmos and then draw it up there and say what the two solutions would be. And you can go right to that one if you want. I 
So part of the reason I'm not worried about the vertex today is because a lot of times the vertex isn't going to be on your screen. Like, like number one, the vertex is actually at negative 49. So it's not really going to be on your screen, but you only care where it's crossed. So can you put a dot where crossed Yep. Yep, that's the main thing we're focused on today. Go ahead, Lexi. I didn't hear what the rest of that was. How do you know what? Um, click your click your mouse on the line, and it should have a dot, like faint gray dot, where it crosses, and you just put your mouse on it. Yeah. Sorry. What? You don't know what that is? Oh, that's probably like your sleeve or the paper hitting the screen. You, I thought maybe you were just trying to doodle. It sort of looked like a mustache, so I thought maybe it was just trying to be a little face. Uh, okay. On Mikey's answer, he, he drew it great. When you're writing solutions, you're right. I don't think I actually wrote it up here, did I? When you're writing solutions, write them as just single numbers. If you write it as a point, that's okay. So like the one that Bella wrote, this would, this would be okay and I don't know if we'll, acceptable is not the right word, it's just a different way of writing the answer. Um, but up here, I know what you're saying with it, but when you write it like this, this is the point seven, negative seven. I don't know, how did, how did it go for everybody else? Is it went okay? I mean, the worst part is typing the equation in and zooming in and out if you need to. So we're feeling all right about this topic. Yeah. Uh, that's honestly what we're going to be doing for the most of the rest of the chapter. We're just finding answers and solutions in different ways. The graphing way is by far the easiest way, but it's not always something you have access to. So after graphing, we're going to learn how to solve it with just the equation. Okay, well then, I don't have it set up in Desmos yet because my meeting went right till class. Uh, this page is your homework. There's nine questions on here for you to graph on Desmos and then find the solutions. And the most difficult part is just typing the equation incorrect. You know, like it's easy to accidentally hit the wrong button or whatever. Oh, here, let me. 